Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshipper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come. Welcome to Family Chapel. I'm Shannon Boston, your religious educator from All Souls Unitarian Church, All Souls Everywhere. And if you have a chalice, I invite you to light it. A chalice is just a simple cup or container with a candle inside. And I will light mine. And we will begin our service today. This is indeed a day to celebrate. Let us rejoice in it and be glad, and let us count our many blessings. Let us be grateful for the capacity to feel and to understand. Let us be grateful for the incredible gift of life. And let us be especially grateful for the ties of love that bind us together, giving dignity meaning, worth, and joy to all of our days. And please join me in our covenant. Love is the spirit of this church and service is its law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Today's story is on our church-wide theme of forgiveness. It is called Under the Lemon Moon, and it is written by Edith Hope Fine and illustrated by Renee King Moreno. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you take the time to listen to it over and over again. And place yourself in the shoes of different characters as you listen. Because we are all different characters in these stories. We are all heroes and villains. We are all helpers and bystanders. We are all witnesses. And, uh, and we can all learn from different perspectives. So this is our story on forgiveness under the lemon moon. Settle in, put on your imagination caps. Here we go. Deep in the night, Rosalinda heard noises. Snap. What is that? She wondered. Slipping from her bed, she peeked out past Mama's garden in its Papa clothes scarecrow and past the wash line. Way back by the lemon tree, something was moving. Heart thumping, Rosalinda crept to the doorway. Blanca, her pet hen, fluttered down from the rafters. Bark, 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 rocked Blanca. Shh, hushed Rosalinda. The lemon wedge moon gave only a sliver of light. She waited for her eyes to grow used to the darkness. Then she saw branches shaking in the shadows. Rosalinda looked harder. A man with hunched shoulders was stuffing lemons into a cloth sack. Her lemons from her tree. With Blanca under her arm, Rosalinda slipped out and hid behind the scarecrow. Who is this night man? Why does he take my lemons? She wondered. Scrack! Blanca flew to the scarecrow's head and Rosalinda wobbled its stick stiff arms. Aye, cried the night man. He grabbed the sack and fled. In the morning, 
Rosalinda touched the stump of a broken branch. Not a single lemon was left on the whole tree. A tear slid down her cheek. Oh, mi arbolito, mi arbolito, my little tree, Rosalinda crooned a sad song. As Blanca brocked along, she loved her lemon tree almost as much as she loved Blanca. Why, Blanca, why did he do this? Rosalinda asked, clutching a bundle of twigs. Blanca's feathers drooped. By the end of the week, many leaves of the lemon tree were yellow. Some had fallen. Rosalinda's worries got bigger. First the nightman, and now her tree was sick. After breakfast, Rosalinda listened to the thrum, thrum of Mama's loom. I must do something, Rosalinda told her parents. Perhaps someone we know can help, Mama suggested, smoothing Rosalinda's long hair. A neighbor or friend or your abuela, added Papa with a hug. He turned back to his workbench and Rosalinda set out. My tree is sick. What should I do? Rosalinda asked her neighbor, Esmeralda. I talk to my plants, said Esmeralda, tending her lush flower garden. I did that, thought Esmeralda. Aloud, she said, gracias. She caught up with Signor Rodolfo, her friend of few words. My tree is sick. What should I do? She asked. Much water, he said, heading for the nearby Mercado, the marketplace. I did that, Rosalinda thought. She remembered the heavy buckets of water she had lugged to her tree. Aloud, she said, gracias. When Rosalinda arrived at her grandmother's house, Abuela was sitting on the porch in the morning sun. Rosalinda settled in close to her, watching Abuela's knitting needles flash. What should I do for my tree, Abuela? It will take time for your tree to heal, mija she said. I will light a candle for you. I haven't done that, thought Rosalinda. Aloud, she said, gracias, abuelita. Abuela eased the worries from Rosalinda's forehead with her warm hand. The candle will help, Rosalinda, abuela said quietly. Perhaps it will summon la anciana, the old one. She helps things grow. Everyone had heard rumors of Lanciana, of her powers for bringing rain and making crops grow strong and tall. Tell me again, Abuela, said Rosalinda. For many years of full moons, Abuela began, it has been said there lives an old wise woman with gentle eyes. She walks the countryside helping things grow. Where can I find her? asked Rosalinda. No one knows, but they say Lanciana will come when she is needed. Rosalinda thought hard. I need you. Please come, Anciana. All day and night, Rosalinda waited, but Lanciana did not come. Be back by sundown, called Papa as Rosalinda and Blanca left the house early the next morning. Rosalinda waved. She walked and walked, searching. Blanca buck 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 at her heels. Everywhere they went, Rosalinda called, Anciana! Anciana! La Anciana did not answer. Maybe she isn't real, Rosalinda said to Blanca. Buck buck! clucked the hen, as if she understood. As the sun slipped down the sky, Rosalinda told Blanca, we must go home. They circled back through the Mercado with its colorful stalls and busy shoppers. Then Rosalinda stopped. Limones, said a sign on the last stall. Behind a man, a woman rocked a baby. Their two small children played nearby with pebbles. Rosalinda knew this man with hunched shoulders who was selling lemons. He was the night man, and the lemons were hers. Rosalinda shivered. She and Blanca ducked behind a stall lined with bright marionettes. It's the night man with lemons from my tree. 
Where, where are you, Anciana? stammered Rosalinda. She stroked her quivering hen's soft feathers. I am here, came a low, sweet voice. Rosalinda jumped. Before her stood a woman with silvery hair. Her wrinkles were deep. Her eyes were gentle. Rosalinda knew. Filled with wonder, she could not speak. You have looked far from me, Rosalinda, the woman said. Tell me. The woman listened as Rosalinda whispered her story. To take your lemons was wrong, Lanciana murmured. Perhaps he had a need. From her flowing sleeve, Lanciana pulled a strong branch with many buds. Mira, watch, said Lanciana. Recuerda, remember. The moon will be full tonight. Rosalinda listened with her heart and mind as Lanciana spoke of how to heal the lemon tree. That night, Rosalinda crept outside under the lemon moon. She closed her eyes. Mira y recuerda. Watch and remember. Rosalinda tore an old rag into strips. She held Lanciana's branch against the stump of the broken branch of her lemon tree. They fit as naturally as a fat lemon fit in Rosalinda's cupped hands. Round and round, she pulled the ribbons of cloth, binding the two branches until they held as one. Moonbeams poured over the sickly tree, making yellowed leaves look silver. Tired, Rosalinda curled up under her tree and dozed. She woke with a start when Blanca barked. Rosalinda rubbed her eyes, astonished. Her tree glowed in the night, golden, dripping with lemons as big and round as baby moons. Arms wide, Rosalinda danced around the shimmering lemon tree, and Blanca followed wings aflutter. The next morning, Rosalinda told Blanca, I know what to do. She piled fat yellow lemons into a wooden cart. Blanca perched on the lemon pyramid, and off they went together. Friends and neighbors greeted her on the way. One by one, Rosalinda gave away the amazing lemons. Que grandes! How big! Gracias, said Esmeralda. Hermosas, said Signor Rodolfo. Lovely! Que jugosas! How juicy! Gracias, said Abuela. When Rosalinda had given away all but one of her lemons, she headed for the last stall of the Mercado. Rosalinda stared at the night man, and he stared back. Then her warm hand touched his cold, rough hand, and she gave him her last fat lemon. Lo siento. I am sorry. The man lowered his eyes. Rosalinda found her voice. Siembra las semillas. Plant the seeds she told him. Do it tonight while the moon is still full. The man was quiet. He tilted his head toward his family with their worn clothes and hungry faces. For you and for them, said Rosalinda. I will do as you tell me, he said. Rosalinda smiled. With a puck, 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 Blanca flip-flapped into the little cart for a ride home. She settled in content. Rosalinda felt content, too. Except for one fat hen, Rosalinda's cart was empty. But her heart was as full as a lemon moon. What did that story tell us about forgiveness? Could Rosalinda have have stayed angry. She was wronged. But what she did with that, 
she sought to understand, even though she was, she was harmed. But she was able to move past and she was able to help. She was able to help herself and someone else. That was really beautiful. I think that's something we should all strive to do. It's hard. It's not easy, especially when our feelings get hurt, when we feel threatened, when we're scared. There's a prayer I'd like to teach you. I'd like for you to repeat after me. We're going to say it three times. It's very short. It goes like this. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. We'll do that two more times. We forgive ourselves and each other. We begin again in love. We forgive ourselves. and each other. We begin again in love. Amen. Go and be blessed and be a blessing. Until next week.